missing the anti-air Americame. I would love to see Mobius do some anti-air. That would have nice. So oh my God. Electricity seems to be scary. Oh, no. No, nice. Don't go in after. Dark oh Christmas. my gosh. Hello, my name is Trax, aka Americame, aka the last surviving Victor Main, here once again to talk about Vampire Savior. What a shocker, right? With the Capcom fighting collection on everyone's mind, I feel like people need a one-stop shop for anything you need to get started on this absolute banger of a game. VSAV has been played competitively for over two decades, but the barrier for entry is surprisingly low, making it a great game for beginners. It's got that golden ratio that every fighting game wishes it could have. Easy to pick up, but impossible to master. This video will be split into three sections. The first will be a general overview of VSAV, what the game is like and why people like it. The second will be about the mechanics of the game and a general guide on how to play. And the third will be frequently asked questions. Here are some timestamps for each section of the video, so you can skip around. Pretty soon I'll also be uploading a video to help you pick what character you'd like to main. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button to be notified when that drops. So, what makes Vampire Savior, Vampire Savior? The most visually apparent thing is the speed. It is a very fast-paced, active, and dynamic game with very little downtime. Entire matches can be over in under a minute, and a top 8 for VSAV can be shorter than a full match in other games. The community has always embraced this wholeheartedly, as the tournament standard has always been best of 3, while other fast games like Strive or Skullgirls run best of 5 as standard. Vampire has been described as the grandfather of anime fighters, since it shares a lot of mechanics with games like Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue. In fact, the very first air dash in a fighting game, a mechanic that defines the anime genre, was on Zable in the first Darkstalkers game. While the pace more resembles an anime or versus series game, the actual gameplay is more grounded and footsie oriented, similar to a Street Fighter title. You aren't doing insane 300 hit combos that last multiple minutes. Most combos are actually very simple and universal across the cast, so you don't have to spend hours in the lab learning all your B&Bs. That's not to say there's no combo complexity, it can still get pretty nutty in the right circumstances. It's more that the importance of combos are downplayed in favor of an extremely rich neutral game. VSAV is a game you never sit idly in. It's hyper rushdown focused. There are very few zoners in this game, and they're all better when played defensively. To balance this, the defensive options are also very good, and require an attentive player to use effectively. There really is no autopiloting or downtime. It's all about action, with the fluff cut completely out. All this adds together to make a super engaging game, unlike anything else on the market. Before we break down the game mechanics, I'm just gonna get this out right up front. After picking a character, you may get a prompt with a couple of options. Normal, Auto, Turbo, or Auto and Turbo. Just pick Turbo, don't even fuck around with any of the other ones. Auto is Auto Guard, which is banned competitively and heavily frowned upon in general. I'm making this video before the collection comes out, so I'm not sure if this will even be an issue, since the settings should be set automatically, but they weren't set properly in Dark Soccer's Resurrection. So I'm passing the word on just in case. Also, if you pick your character second, you only get to choose normal or auto. In that case, just pick normal. Vampire Savior is played with two life bars instead of rounds, indicated by these bats on the HUD. It's not too dissimilar to stocks in Smash Bros. Whenever you lose a bat, you get right back up and get back to fighting immediately, no waiting for a new round to start. Also, your opponent's life bar is not refilled. Games like Killer Instinct and Injustice use this two life bar system as well, and it just cuts out a good chunk of waiting. There are two types of damage you can do in VSAV red damage and white damage. Red damage is permanent and unrecoverable, 
but white damage will regenerate over time as long as you don't get hit or blocked. Moves tend to do about twice as much red damage than white damage. If your opponent can avoid you for even a few seconds after you land a combo, they can recover a good chunk of the damage you've done to them. However, if you run out of green life, regardless if you have any white life left, you will lose a bat. This highly incentivizes constant pressure and relentless rushdown. Blocking is your standard hold back to block fare, as you see in most fighting games. BSAB also has air blocking. You can block air to airs and most specials. However, most ground normals are actually air unblockable, so keep that in mind when trying to chicken block. Movement is really important and a defining feature of VSAV. On top of walking and jumping, every character can dash as well. This might seem boilerplate for fighting games nowadays, but back then it certainly wasn't the standard yet. Dashes are very strong in VSAV. Almost every character can convert a full combo off a dash normal, giving everyone strong burst offense and a larger effective threat range. Dashes are also not standardized at all in VSAV. There are multiple different types of grounded dashes. I'll split these into four different categories. Ground dash, hop dash, jet dash, and teleport dash. Most characters are ground dashers, and they're the most normal type of dash. They slide across the floor and smack you with a button. Most ground dashers can only hit you with standing normals while dashing. A few can only hit you with crouching normals, and even fewer can hit you with whatever the hell they want. You can press back to cancel your forward dash at any time, so you have a lot of control on your distances. Hop dashers leap forward or backwards a set distance. Any attacks done while leaping are actually considered overheads. These overheads are extremely quick and near impossible to react to. You usually can't get a combo off of them unless you delay the button a little bit, taking the instant out of the instant overhead. However, hop dashers can shorten their dashes significantly by pressing the opposite direction right after they dash. These short hops are really strong movement tools, and they can more easily lead to full conversions. Jet dashers are a lot like hop dashers. They leave the ground when they dash, and their dashing attacks are considered overheads. The main difference is that you can control how far you dash. If you hold forward, you can keep on flying in the air, allowing you to fly over the opponent's head and hit them with cross-ups. These aren't as fast or as unreactable as the hop dashes, though. Teleport dashes are like ground dashes, but they're somewhat invincible and can cross through the opponent. Only two characters have them, and they're kind of weird. Dimitri's dash has tremendous range and a ton of invincibility, but it has a lot of end lag and can only be cancelled early with a special move. Lele's is much shorter and can be cancelled with anything, but the startup is horrible. You won't see many Lele's doing grounded dashes outside of weird cross-up Oki stuff. On top of all these grounded dashes, a handful of characters also have air dashes. No two air dashes are made the same, and they're all incredibly strong, allowing you to approach from a ton of different angles and timings. QB's is probably the most dangerous, since it actually tracks the opponent, effectively giving her an unreactable triangle jump. Basic combos in VSAV work on a chain system. You've probably seen this in a number of games under a million different names. Gatlings, target combos, dial -a combos, magic series, passing links, beat edge, whatever your sexual preference is, they're all the same. Though we call them chains in VSAV. You hit a series of buttons in order and they combo into each other with no need to time your inputs. The priority list for chaining is light punch, light kick, medium punch, medium kick, heavy punch, heavy kick. You can chain forward into any higher strength button in this sequence, but you cannot chain backwards or into the same button, except for your lights on certain characters. For example, my light punch can chain into any normal, but heavy kick cannot chain into anything. It's rare to get all six buttons in a chain, but getting three or four is pretty easy. A basic near universal chain is crouch light kick, crouch medium kick, crouch heavy kick. 
It works for almost every character and scores a quick knockdown. You can also do Chains in the Air, which is unique to VSAV amongst the other Darkstalkers games. People will immediately flip out from a single attack when hit in an air-to-air -air situation, so it's not really for air combos. It's mainly used either against air-blocking opponents to keep them trapped in block stun, or to add more hits to your jump-ins. Chained normals lose all special cancelable properties. As you can see here, my crouching medium kick is special cancelable. But whenever I chain into crouching medium kick, I can no longer cancel into Morgan's fireball. This is where this next technique comes into play, linking into normals instead of chaining into them. If you play Street Fighter, you know all about links, but I gotta do my due diligence and explain. To steal the definition from the fighting game glossary, it's a technique in where two moves can combo into each other by letting the first move entirely complete, including its recovery, before starting the second move. In order for two moves to link into each other, the first move needs to be plus on hit by at least as much as the second move startup. For example, Sasquatch's Light Punch is plus 8 on hit. This means if I hit Lilith with Stand Light Punch, I will recover 8 frames before her. Now, my Standing Medium Punch only has 6 frame startup. So, by the numbers, I can make the two combo into each other without chaining though I intentionally have to delay the medium punch long enough that it dodges the chaining window. Now, you might think this is useless. It does the same damage as just chaining the two normals. However, since I did not chain into medium punch, it keeps its special cancelable properties, allowing for big old damage. Lynx can also allow you to combo into the same normal, or combo backwards in the chain priority. Normals in VSAV usually bleed plus frames, so links aren't too difficult. Not every normal can or should be linked. The effectiveness of links depend on the character. Everyone can definitely get by with just chains, so don't be too discouraged if you can't get it. Meter builds pretty rapidly in this game. You mainly get meter by hitting or getting hit. You can also whiff normals and specials to build meter on your own. You can technically stock up to 99 bars. It is extremely impractical and you'll never get it that high, but it's not too uncommon to see people with 5 or more bars stocked. Now there are 3 different ways that you can spend your meter. ES moves are enhanced specials that are performed the same way as a regular special move, but with two buttons. Similar to EX moves in a Street Fighter title. It costs a whole bar to do an ES move. You'll flash blue, and whatever special move you enhance will have its properties changed. Usually that just means more damage, but some ES moves are drastically different from the original special move. Vampire's EX moves are more closely related to what you'd call supers in other games. For clarity's sake, I will also just call them supers. They're unique attacks performed with a unique motion, and you'll flash rainbow when you do them. They function like special moves in terms of cancelability. You can cancel into supers from normals, but not from specials or chains. However, a lot of characters have Raging Demon style supers. I don't know what they're officially called, but they're supers you can activate by doing a specific button combination quickly. For example, Morgan's Darkness Illusion Super can be activated by pressing Light Punch, Light Punch, Forward, Light Kick, and Heavy Punch, all within quick succession. This style of super is unique, since they actually can be cancelled from chains, and from buttons that aren't special cancelable normally. Most of these demon supers are extremely good, and the ability to confirm them through chains is fantastic. Dark Forces are the last metered option you have, and they're a signature of Vampire Savior. It's an install every character has access to by pressing two buttons of the same strength and spending a bar of meter. The install itself has a lot of invincibility on it. For some characters, this is the only invincible option they have. For that alone, Dark Forces can be incredibly useful. In Dark Force, every character gets a unique buff, from Hyper Armor, to new movement tools, to brand new special moves, to assists, to even a different moveset entirely. The effectiveness of these buffs vary wildly from character to character. It can range from character-definingly amazing, to situationally useful, to completely useless. When you're in Dark Forest, a timer will automatically tick down. 
When it runs out, you will usually be left with a lot of recovery frames where you're vulnerable to pretty much anything. Getting hit will also make the timer go down faster, so you want to make the most out of your Dark Force usage. You can manually deactivate Dark Force by pressing two buttons of the same strength again, which can let you initiate those recovery frames at a safer moment. Dark Forces are not treated as special moves. You cannot cancel into them from anything. More importantly, you cannot use Dark Forces as true reversals. You need at least one frame after Wake Up to have passed to activate them. So even though they are invincible on startup, they will lose to real meaties. These have as old school one button throws. You press forward or backwards and a button, usually heavy punch, and you'll chuck the opponent. Some characters have throws on their heavy kick, and some even have throws on their medium buttons. Throws have very tiny range in this game, so you gotta make sure you're right up in the opponent's face to chuck them. If you input your own throw when your opponent throws you, you'll tech the throw. Throw teching doesn't usually outright break the throw, but it softens the damage and allows you to land on your feet. There's also, mostly, universal air throws. They work the same way as grounded throws, but you guessed it, in the air. When your opponent is knocked down, you can do a special pursuit attack with up and any button. This will hit OTG and tack on a little extra damage. You can also press two buttons and spend a bar to increase the damage. It should be noted that pursuits only do white damage, and usually don't give great Oki if it hits, so it's kind of a trade-off between damage and Oki. Not every knockdown grants you a guaranteed pursuit, and the way the opponent tech rolls will also matter. However, pursuits usually have you leap towards the opponent and have no recovery when whiffed. So purposely whiffing pursuits can give you great Oki, and even some tricky corpse hops mix-ups. Oh yeah, tech rolling! After you get knocked down, you can hold forward, back, or nothing at all, and you'll roll up in that direction. These usually have different wake up timings, so make sure you mix up which way you roll to throw off your opponent. BSAP has guard cancels, and they are usually meterless. You get it by doing 6 2 3 and kick or punch depending on who you play in. You can press two buttons to spend some meter to make the guard cancel even stronger. They all have a little bit of invincibility, some more than others. The usefulness of guard cancels can vary wildly from character to character, but they can all be useful in the right situations. Now we gotta talk about the big one, push blocking. Technically, it's called a tech hit, but nobody ever calls it that. It's a push block. You've probably gotten these accidentally while playing. Unfortunately, the way you use push blocks are cryptic and unintuitive. Essentially, you need to press three to six unique inputs while in block stun to successfully push block. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. First off, by unique inputs, it's inputs that are at least one frame apart. If I were to press every button at the same time, it would count as one unique input. However, if I press the same button six times in a row, that would be six unique inputs. And what do I mean by three to six inputs? Well, it's random, unfortunately. You have a percentage chance of triggering a push block for every input past two. The more inputs, the higher chance you got. It's 100% guaranteed at six inputs, so it's semi-consistent at least. But still, you've got to keep all this in mind and press a ton of buttons within about 10 frames of blocking something. Now, I have two separate videos talking about push blocking and different methods of doing it, both on stick and on pad. I'll link them in the description, and I definitely recommend you look at them. Push blocking is an archaic pain, but a major difference between beginner players and intermediate players is consistent push blocking. Vampire Savior is definitely designed around this push block mechanic, and it's for sure worth learning. Or you could just play Anacharis, who actually can't push block at all, and gets a bunch of Anacharis specific block stun infinites on him, which is a lot of fun to deal with. Now I want to address some frequently asked questions about BSAB that you may have. Where do I play Vampire Savior? Well, I'm making this before the Capcom Fighting Collection drops, so hopefully that will be the best way to play. Fingers crossed. 
The way most people play now, however, is an online client called Fightcade. It's basically online matchmaking for hundreds of retro games. It's free, it has rollback netcode, and it even has a rank system. It isn't perfect, but honestly, it's pretty damn near close to it. Give it a look. There's also the Vampire Savior Discord. It's got tons of people, plenty of discussion, and regular tournaments for players of all skill levels. I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely give it a join if you want to learn more. Is Vampire Savior a balanced game? Well, the short answer is no. There are some very clear top tiers and bottom tiers. A tier list for this game looks something like this. The gap between the SS tier and the D tier is pretty significant. That being said, thanks to extremely rich universal mechanics, every character can play the game. No one is unplayably bad or meta-shatteringly good. Hell, the last big major tournament for VSAV, which was Combo Breaker 2022, had no top tiers in top 8 at all, and even had a Morgan player get as far as 3rd. So, while the game is unbalanced, you can definitely make any character you want work competitively. What's with all the different name changes? Honestly, I'm not sure. The Darkstalker series has had a ton of localization changes when it moved out of Japan, and I'm not really sure why. A few character name changes are Alabath, who is known internationally as Rikuo, Guletta, who is changed into BB Hood, Zabel, who is turned into Lord Raptor, Lele, turns into Shen Ko, and Galen, who turns into John Talbane. Hell, even the names of the games are different internationally, which could be an absolute pain when discussing them. There are some universal names we use for characters, like the fish-looking guy we just call Fish, or the wolf-looking guy we just call Wolf. In general, though, the community just calls everything by the Japanese names to avoid confusion. Are there any banned characters or strategies? Well, yes, actually. There are a few secret characters that are banned. Oboro Bishamon is like a boss version of Bishamon, with a slightly different moveset. Realistically, Oboro Bishamon isn't that good. He's worse than regular Bishamon. He was only playable on the console versions of VSAV, and is banned for exclusivity reasons, since arcade players wouldn't be able to play as or against him. Shadow is a secret random select character. You can pick it by hovering over random select, pressing start five times, and then pressing any button. You can play the game normally with your random character, but if you win, you absorb the loser's character and you're forced to play as them next game. Since this technically allows you to switch characters after a win, Shadow is banned. Dark Gallon is another console-exclusive secret character. However, the only difference between him and regular Gallon is cosmetic, so he's actually allowed in tournaments. Auto Block is banned. I already went over this, just don't ever pick it, it's better for your soul. Any glitch that doesn't outright break the game is perfectly allowed. There are a few of these, but they're near impossible to do without a cooperating opponent, so don't worry about getting them on accident. Infinite combos are completely legal. All the infinites in this game are either meter infinites that require you to spend meter to keep them going, or are extremely hard to do, or a combination of both. So they kind of balance themselves out in that way. The only banned stage is Fetus of God. As cool as it looks, it's significantly longer than any other stage, so it's banned for consistency's sake. What about the other Darkstalkers games? The Capcom Fighting Collection has all five of them, should I just stick to VSAV? Well, Vampire Savior is kind of the best of the Darkstalkers games, so most people just stick to that, but the other games aren't terrible by any sense. Vampire 1 is a bit old and janky and kind of obsolete, but it's worth a play at least. Vampire Hunter is actually super sick, it's a really different game. It's even got a few characters that were cut out of VSAV due to space limitation. It's a little bit more slower paced, and it kind of feels more like a traditional Street Fighter game, but it's not bad at all. It has its own scene, although quite a bit smaller, but it's definitely worth checking out. For Vampire Savior 2 and Vampire Hunter 2, don't let the names fool you, because they're actually the same game. It's like a balance patch of sorts for Vampire Savior 1. They actually added in the characters that were cut out from Vampire Hunter to Vampire Savior back into the game, but since they still have space limitations, they took out different characters. Which is the only difference between Hunter 2 and Savior 2, is the roster. They took out different characters for both games. 
I'm actually in the process of making a whole video about why nobody plays these games, but in short, the balance changes that were made were mostly seen as uncompetitive and bad. So people just stuck with Vampire Savior 1 in the long run. It is fun to fuck around with the quote new characters for a bit, but you'll probably end up sticking with Vampire Savior 1. But yeah, that's all for now. Congratulations, you're a Vampire Savior Pro. Go out and have some fun. Links to everything I was talking about in the description, and uh, make sure to subscribe, because I'm going to be putting out a lot of videos when the Capcom Fighting Collection finally drops. Also, I stream on Twitch at least twice a week, so, you know, come check me out. We're probably going to be playing a lot of VSAP in the coming months. Alright, thank you much.